Sean, where are we? Fort Worth, Texas. What car are we in? <laughs> <laughs> We're in a GS300 with a uh, 2JZ GTE swap. What is the greatest thing about that? Because it's actually an Aristo. We yeah. should have gotten here. Should have, but they're like, no, nah, F America. <laughs> <laughs> what Straight I mean. into the point. <laughs> Sean here, Boosted TV on Instagram, and you scare GTR on Instagram. <laughs> so you got two places you can go find Sean's stuff. But Sean is the man responsible for all the goodies that we have filmed all this week. So I want to thank Sean first. So no thank worries. you for doing everything. And drove me to Dallas and back to Fort Worth twice and refused for me to pay for his gas money. That's the kind <laughs> of good dude, good guy, Sean, is amazing. But you've had Supras, you had all the really cool stereotypical Japanese cars, I feel like. Yeah. And you also had a Z06 at one point, and that's how we met. Yes. So how would you describe how we met, Sean? I uh, was tired because my feet hurt at SEMA show. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just hanging out in the booth at Pro Charger because the Z06 was at Pro Charger's booth. And here comes a, a interested Dave walking up. <laughs> <laughs> we start talking and hit it off and we've just been friends ever since. You literally got rid of that C7Z not too far long after that, right? Yeah. It was like another yeah. year about? No, it was about like five months after SEMA maybe. He was like, I mean, that was cool, but. Yeah, it's kind of hilarious because uh, the way the power came in was super, super linear. So it was almost uneventful. Right, so you just kind of did the thing. Yeah. Yeah, but then after that, the next time I saw you, I was at Evan Shanks' wedding. Mm -hmm. And we were like, hey, let's get dinner. You drove all the way out. And then you were in a GTR. Yep. And it was a bolt-on GTR. And we were just goofing around, driving around. You would blow off every two seconds. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it looks like he's having a really good time in the GTR. Little did I know, like, <laughs> what, a few months later, you freaking were like, hey, Boost Logic, I think we should be friends. Take my car. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> back in, like, 2012, they built my first GTR. I had a 2010 GTR. They just did a full bolt-on built tranny because we were going for the the stage one uh, GT1 class in TX2K, which right. requires you to be stock, but doesn't say you can't have a built trans, so you can launch the crap out of it with a built trans. Right. So we ended up getting second. We lost to a car that was fully gutted, <laughs> no interior. The guy took the GPS, and if you know anything what? about GTRs, that the entire big front screen, screen right here, yeah, you took, took that, that out. out? There was no door panels. There was one seat in the car, and it was like a carbon fiber seat. There was no back seats. There was no nothing. And he beat me by three one hundredths of a second. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that speaking was of GPS, yeah. His wife has a Supra, and yes. you have a GTR. And when you pop your garage open, it's just like almost every our generation's dream for a lot of people. You know, <laughs> they look at both those cars and they lose their mind. You know, your GTR. I mean, easily one of the fastest cars I've ever driven, and the best infomercial of all time. <laughs> but wait, there's more! People have never experienced power like that. There's no way to describe it. The GS, though, has become really popular where I'm from in Atlanta. There's lots of GS, ISs, and SC300s. And you just come to the airport and we're driving your truck and you're like, oh yeah, I got a Jay-Z Swap GS too. I was like, when did I, well, I've been left out of the loop. I don't even know. <laughs> but you have the HKS blow -off valve on it, yeah. which makes you almost feel like a true Aristo owner because it's like that early 2000s kind of feeling. I'm really into that. I always liked the 90s JDM stuff. And to me, like the 2J with the HKS blow valve is amazing. But if you're going to make any kind of power at all, it's not great. Tile all the way. Yeah, that's the only way you can go. But... That's what's on mine. Yeah. I love it. That's what's on my wife's Supra too. Yeah, uh, my motor is actually being rebuilt right now, powerhouse racing. So I can't really say my 2J because it's <laughs> gone now. But it's just so much fun. You get in the GS and it actually scoots free. And there it is, turbos. <laughs> 4,000 RPMs, the second turbo kicks in. Well, yeah, because it's like nothing, 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 all of it. Yeah. And it's funny because you've played around with other cars that you probably didn't expect to have a chance against. Yeah, we uh, 
we like to just play around with our little friend group. This you thing, have like a daily race car yes, challenge. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is the one that she has to maintain the fastest daily, which is ridiculous, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> so she drives a uh, AMG Mercedes. It's a C43. It's twin turbo V6, all wheel drive, and right now it's the fastest daily in the group. <laughs> but it makes and like it's stock pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't even touch it. Yeah, but she's uh, she's very much so about being the fastest daily in the group. Can't take the title. Yeah, because she her car was technically faster than the GTR when we finished the Supra. And then I was like, okay, it's time for the GTR to get fast. And right. then she's like, well, if I can't have the fastest race car, I'm keeping the fastest daily. <laughs> <laughs> but then the 335i, I think, is your most proud beat. Yes. This one. <laughs> Our, uh, my wife's cousin has a 335i, and she beat me in this thing. So the next day, I ordered a boost controller. <laughs> 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 and we did a front mount blitz intercooler. It's a, it's a four row, which is way big for this car, but it has. <laughs> the room to grow if I do single right. turbo or whatever. We did the front front mount, the boost controller, and the coilovers, and then without telling her about the boost controller, we went out and raced again, <laughs> and it was a much different story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So I beat her, and then she went out and got a JB4 uh, tuner <laughs> from Burger Motorsports so they okay. can turn the boost up. Yeah. And um, she was pretty much beating me, so I ordered an HKS fuel cut defender. <laughs> And then I could raise the boost higher, and also it would uh, allow me to brake boost. Because before, without the fuel cut defender, you couldn't brake boost. Couldn't brake boost. So now I'm, I'm king dingling again. <laughs> <laughs> so, but except my wife. My wife can still destroy me in the Mercedes. Yeah. But that thing's. But I fast. mean, look, we're we're just easing it, and then it just goes. <laughs> I love it between shifts. It's like a little mouth going. Eh. Dodge with the toe Oh no! <laughs> if anybody ever meets Sean, the oh, first God. thing he's gonna say is, "Do you have a Dodge with toe mirrors?" Oh great, we can't be friends. <laughs> that combined with airbags, yeah. can't stand either of those. <laughs> so funny how blunt you are about it. Like we were at the beat yesterday, and a clean car. I'm not gonna say which one, so their feelings aren't hurt. The very clean car came in. And uh, Sean was like, oh, that's nice. And then it went, Shh, and you're like, what a piece of crap. <laughs> like, within five seconds, you couldn't handle fudge. I'm not trying to be that mean, but at the end of the day, I just feel like bags are for groceries. <laughs> Texas has always been known for, like, high horsepower stuff. And you were to Dallas Performance a while with the Twin Turbo Lambos, thus how we got the opportunity with the Preformante yeah. uh, review, which if you haven't seen, you should definitely check it out because it was nuts. We also found out by high research and development that the 720S is a very fast car. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, First supercar that's ever impressed me, stock. Stock, they just, they yeah. don't. They just don't impress me anymore after working at Dallas Performance for three and a half years. It's like, it's super, it just makes you jaded. To everything. Yeah, and because you go from being in a car that you think a thousand horsepower is really fast, I do too, but then you work at Dallas Performance and you're like, wow, a thousand horsepower is like, not that fast because we have 15 Lambos in here that make 2,000 horsepower. Right. So it's like, it's ridiculous. I get from being like King Dingling with my 1,000 horsepower Corvette to just this guy. Yeah, you go I, in. I feel like whenever I watch the TX2K videos, especially on the street, I'm like, where's the time gone? Yeah. You know, because 600 horsepower was gone forever. Yeah. Back yeah, in the day yeah. when I had my 03 Cobra, I made 634, had a Whipple 34, a Sean Highland 5 liter, and it was pretty much on low boost, and there was nothing that could beat that car. Yeah. And now, you go to 2K with 634 horsepower, and you're like, you're I, a can't snail. Even, I can't even watch the races because I'm so far behind. You That's know? so wild. It's just crazy how we changed since 2000, and what was like 2006? Eight. Yeah, seven, yeah. yeah. Has this been your favorite daily you've had, though? Yes and no for different reasons. I had, right before I got this, I had a NC Miata that was fully done by uh, Texas Track Works, which they do road course cars. But it didn't do this. <laughs> it didn't do that. No. Um, it had Olin's uh, back half cage, um, 
Hotchkiss Sways. Everything. Yeah, hard top. It was all set up for road course. And although that was amazing and fun, you can only do road course so often, and a Miata is not great for a daily driver. So we did shift sector. Yep, California. What did you trap at? Uh, 213. Uh, non officially because the traps didn't work, and officially 203 when the traps did work, when it was Jeez. turned down. Either way, yeah. you went over 200 and a half mile. Yeah. Is that super sketchy? It, it just depends. Like, it is and it's not at the same time because I ran it on bead locks, and anyone that knows anything about bead locks, you can't really balance them 100% because the bead lock on the outside adds weight that you just can't counterbalance. And uh, so at, at about 190, the steering wheel started shaking so hard oh. that it blistered the insides of my palms on both hands. Oh my God. Because it was shaking so hard. And I like, and I, I wanted that 200 mile an hour pass so bad that I so stayed in it. you powered through it? And you know, I did that twice. And after that, I was like, you know what? If I don't do 200, I, I'm not gonna risk my life anymore. So we went back to the, the, the uh, trailer and our buddy was there, he lives in California, and he had his, he had two sets of wheels for his car, and he let me borrow a set of 20s on all four drag radials. And, right. And on the street, when I have it turned up, not great, it'll spin, whatever. But on that place, and that track, it did okay enough, it hooked enough for me to go 200, and it was That's not nearly wild. as sketchy. Which is nuts. Yeah, but the thing is, is the shutdown, I love Shift Sector and Coalinga, they were, they were really nice to us, they, invited us out there they treated us great but the shutdown i quickly realized why we were the third fastest car there and it was just because the shutdown is so short i think that's the problem with most of the half mile events is that they can't rent out runways long enough yeah and you just have to find one that that is long enough to make you comfortable i mean there are people that do it but i didn't have a parachute at the time so we were running on just stock brakes, going 213 on all that one pass, and whenever the, I was trying to get it shut down, it, you either hit a wall or you shut down and go into a 90 degree right turn. Oh my God. So I was grabbing e-brake at 58 miles an hour trying to go into this 90 degree right turn. Oof. And after that, I was just like, okay, that's enough. We've been 200 now. I'm Game over. I'm over yeah, I'd be the exact same way. The good thing about it is, it's like you said in your videos, if you haven't watched it, you need to. But it's very, very normal car, unless you get under boost. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> when you get under boost, you're like, where am I? <laughs> what is this? Why do I feel like I'm being tickled? <laughs> like, it's that roller coaster feeling times 10. Like, you know you go on a drop on a roller coaster, but as soon as you hit that fourth gear, it's just like, oh, like yeah. oh, I don't even know what to think. That's why I explain to people that have never been in it, they're like, what is it like? I'm like, well, it's like an infomercial late at night. You get into it and you're like, oh, this is a pretty good deal. We're moving. And then all of a sudden it's, but wait, there's more. <laughs> oh, like it just kills you. <laughs> It gets up and goes. It does pretty good for a yeah. 2001 land yacht. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. People don't understand that. They're like, how heavy is it? I'm like, well, they're 200 pounds heavier than a Supra from what I've been told. And then when you take the exhaust off, I think we weighed it and it was right around 200 pounds. Because there were four mufflers on this thing. And, and like, there were, I think, six cats. I mean, the whole thing is, there's no pipe. It's like pipe, muffler, resonator, cat, like the whole time. Well, on that note, I just want to thank you so much again for taking me around Dallas. It's been awesome. Yeah, no worries. And also, let me drive your GS. Yesterday, we went to a taco place, and you're like, um, what are you doing? You're driving home. I was like, <laughs> all right, not bad. One that knows me knows I like to go fast, but I don't like to drive. I don't like to drive in general. I'm just, just boring driving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on that note, I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you, Sean, once again. Go follow all his stuff. Here it is, right there. Okay, bye. <laughs>